Hi everyone, today I wanted to um, show you this product that I've been telling you about that um, this inventor had come up with. But I was also going to tell you a couple things. Um, when I was at the store the other day, um, I had gone to get some framing done and I went over to Hobby Lobby because they have really good framing uh, people there. But um, while I was there, I decided to take a look around because somebody had told me that they had found Pentallic sketchbooks at Hobby Lobby and that she lived in Michigan, um, not in the area that I live in. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go check it out. I wanted to see. So I went over to the scrap or scrapbook sketchbook section and looked all through everywhere. Um, canvas area, the painting area, all the, all the art rows. And there were no Pentelic sketchbooks. And I thought, well, that's really odd. She bought one. It was an accordion, one of the accordion fold books. The um, Dream, Dream Catcher sketchbook or whatever. Uh, the watercolor one. And I did not find it. Now, maybe they were just sold out. But while I was there, I noticed that they had an entire Stillman and Burn section at Hobby Lobby. So I decided to try another one. And I got the little bitty one. I got, um, this one is five and a half by three and a half inches, uh, 26 sheets or 52 pages. And it is extra heavyweight white cold press mixed media, dry and wet media, watercolor ink, it says. Um, I don't think it's 140 pound. Let me see. Some of them are, some of them are not. My puppy just walked in. Hi, are you gonna come up? No? Okay. Um, this one is the Beta Series Premium, um, which is the extra heavyweight, 270 GSM. So it is not quite 140 pound. It's probably about 130 or 135. And um, the, paper is nice to me it feels nice and heavy heavier than the moleskin does now there's one thing that I notice with this paper is that I, the back of the paper does not have the same tooth as the front of the paper which bothers me I like them to be the same on both sides um, no you can't have any boxes no out <sighs> Christmas you should have seen him last night we had our family Christmas party here and he went crazy because we do this white elephant gift where you pick up a gift everybody just throws them in a pile you pick your number and you start going and each gift can be stolen up to three times and so there is paper flying and people screaming it is so loud I'm surprised I can talk today and I'm so exhausted but it is so much fun there were 23 adults playing the game and it's just an adults only game although some of the kids got involved with their parents and picked out the gifts and stole the gifts and that kind of thing but Diesel was having such a ball opening opening boxes and helping people out so anyway I'm going to use this little sketchbook as well I thought this is something that I can just fit in my purse and take with me wherever I go but it is a little bothersome that the back of the sheet is is smooth yet the front of the sheet has a slight tooth to it although if you are an ink and watercolor user and you'd like to do both you it would be a good way for you to test out do you like a little bit of roughness on your surface or do you like it completely smooth to put your ink on the 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 side that has the cold press um, feel to it is still pretty smooth much smoother than what I'm used to so anyway that's this little book I got it for $10.99 at Hobby Lobby and now on to the the thing that I wanted to show you about or tell you about this is the pocket-sized portable painter hands-free watercolor palette hands-free this is the box that it comes in. It is an empty palette. It has pans. Um, there's two, four, 12 pans. And um, this box also comes with a water, a double-sided watercolor brush. Um, it's very cool looking. And before I get on to showing it to you, I just want to tell you a little bit about this. Um, until the end of December, he's trying to 
Um, he's calling this his, uh, what is it called? I forget what he calls it. This is made by a man by, by the name of Steve Padden. He lives in Long Beach. Um, and he says that he started designing the portable painter because he wanted one. Um, but as it developed, he realized that it had something that could make watercolor simpler for anyone to use, especially when traveling or indoors. Um, so now the project's almost complete, and he's invested into the injection tooling and small test production run. That's where I'm at. He gave me one of these palettes to try and to review. So I'm reviewing it for you and for him, and then I'll give him my feedback. Um, but he really needs support to help fund a full production run that can get the portable painter into the hands of painters and urban sketchers everywhere. So if you go to his site, which I will put in the description box below, um, you can give, I think he's asking $23 for one portable painter, um, which is fairly reasonable when you think about a metal palette, you pay at least that much. Um, and this is plastic. It's got a metal piece, but it's plastic. Um, there's a video on it that you can see, you can watch, but $23 is what they're charging for one, $60 for three, $100 for five. So if you want to buy, um, buy extras. And it says here that it come, he, the portable painter comes from his art college roots. Since student days, he always carried a small watercolor set and other supplies with him wherever he traveled and realized that he couldn't, could probably design a better watercolor set if he put his mind to it. Then this began a year-long effort to identify all the elements that he wanted and to combine them in a single, elegant style. In the design process, he discovered a novel way to have the water containers con connect securely with the case and form a pedestal base. So this even allows the set to balance on a painter's knee for totally hands-free use. So knowing my luck, I'd jerk and I'd have water everywhere. But <laughs> So it has the potential for making open-air painting and urban sketching much simpler. Around the world, people of all ages observe and paint from life as tourists or locals. The best of their work is nothing short of spectacular. And when I look at the beauty they're creating every day just for the love of it, it urges him to use the portable painter to connect with his old art college self to turn off devices, turn off powers of observation, and he hopes that you will join him. So tooling for the great new watercolor palette has already been created. Your support is vital to help him full fund a full production run for the portable painter because he needs he needs the funding to get it up and running and start to get it into the hands of as many painters and urban sketchers as possible. In turn, you can own one of the world's first portable painters with his gratitude. So, this is the portable painter. This is how, what it looks like when you get it. Um, my ruler here, no baby. My ruler says here that it is, I was going to guess 7 by 3, but it's about, let's see, um, just under three inches wide and and uh, about five and a half inches long and the depth of this is about an inch thick. So the way it works is this little metal piece and this is my first concern with this um, and I mean I'm going to tell him about this. This first little metal piece here can go off either in either direction. You just slide it you just slide it right off the front like this, just like that. And then these become the water cups that will set on each side of the palette. Um, then it opens on the top. So you just lift up the top part and flip it back. That's one of your mixing trays. And then you flip this tray back and that's your other mixing tray. Then because it's hand free, there's no little thing on here under here to hold on to. Stop it. Hang on, you guys. He wants me to play with him. Okay, so now 
then you take this cup and on one side of the cup are these little I'm sorry I'm still waiting on lighting I, it's a bummer that my other light is broken so my light is really poor in here and I have it shining in my eyes um, but anyway this oh my goodness stop it <laughs> he wants to play so this slides on there's these little little things on the side here that you can just slide this onto so it just goes right across and slides on. Nice heavy duty plastic that doesn't look like it would break very easily. Then the other cup does the same. You just slide it on and then, whoops, then I lost all the pans. He said there's some minor changes that they're working on. So this is what it's gonna look like. And then it will set right on a table, which I'm gonna set it down on for a second while I pick up all of these that fell. I think I just lost four of my half pans. Uh, the palette holds half pans. And now I'm gonna put you at a different angle so that you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay. So now I have the painter down here. Move my lighting again so that you can have some light. There. That should help. Um, and these pans just set in here. I would think once you get them all set up and the paint is in there, they'll stay more steady. Um, and in this then comes this little brush like this that you can just lift out with your finger. It's a double-sided brush. These are, it's a very small brush, but it, it's a round one and it comes to a very fine point. Really nice and fine. And then if you pull on the back here, there's another even smaller, a shorter brush. Both of these come to a very fine point. I would say this is probably a five, and this is probably about a three. Um, it's comfortable in the hand, but very skinny. Skinnier than a regular paintbrush, I think. Oh no, they're about the same. It just feels funny in my hand, maybe because I didn't paint yesterday. <laughs> um, now, you can rest your brush alongside on the water dish like this, and then you have multiple mixing areas. These areas, to me, I'm not sure if I'll like them or not. I'm going to put some paint in here, and I'm going to try to use the palette, but these mixing areas might be great for washes um, that you need depth and you want the sides to come up a little higher. This side of the mixing area is much bigger. Um, these ones are very small. Um, and then, like I said, there's room for 12 colors. He also says that you can set it on your, on your um, knee. I'm going to try that right now. And I can set it on my knee perfectly fine. Um, there's, a, there's a video of that on his web page that you can go to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put some paints in here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, pick out 12 of my faves and I will put them in here and then we can see how the whole thing works. Hang on. Okay, so I've gotten my um, my paints that I want to use. It looks like more than 12, but some of my paints are getting a little bit um, empty. So I'm going to start with some Hansi Yellow Medium got all these paint palettes now. I'm using up so many paints. Um, I'm just going to put this in here like that. Now if you want to smooth them out, you can use a toothpick, which is a great way to um, smooth out your paint pans and get them nice and flat but I don't have a toothpick with me right this second, so I just grabbed a paint knife, which will work. Then I'm going to go from that to New Gamboge, which is an orangier yellow, a warmer yellow. I like to have a cool yellow and a warm yellow in my mix here. And... To smooth that out too. And 
and then from there I'm going to do a my reds, a quinacridone red, which is a kind of a bright red. And my next one is going to be alizarin crimson. And I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. There. Then from there, I'm going to go to my blues. I brought, I got three blues. I'm going to start with my ultramarine. You feel like my other palette. Grab a new tube here. Ultramarine. These are all Daniel Smith Extra Fine watercolors, which is my brand of choice. But I do have a couple other watercolor palettes that I'll be reviewing that I got, and I can't wait to show them to you. It's just I don't have time to do I mean, do I do one every day? Holy smokes. I want to use them too, so. Oops, I'm getting that all over now. Okay. I hate filling these up. One second. Um, now from that, I've got Prussian Blue, which is a lot like um, Phthalo. But I just got the Prussian. I wanted to try Prussian and see if I like it better than Phthalo. See if one's less staining over the other. I don't know. Still haven't quite figured that out. But I should probably just go on their website to check it. And they would probably say that on their website. Then these do feel very loose right now, but I know that once I get them wet and things seep into the cracks, they're going to tighten up and stick. Okay, from there I'm going to go to my indigo over... I don't know if I should go this way. Yeah, I think I will in a circle. My blue will be right here. Probably almost don't even need a Payne's Gray if I have indigo because they're very similar. But my Payne's Gray is just a cheap cotton brand. Okay. I just put in Green Appetite Genuine. This is Sap Green. This one is a cotton color. Clean this off. There we go. And part of the reason I do this, I like to get it flat so that when I'm using it, it goes flat. This is thick because it's got more binder in it than the, the Daniel Smith colors do. The student colors are always thicker like that because they have so much binder in them. Um, I'm just going to squish this down in here. And, oh gosh, I, this is another thing that I'm not sure I'm going to like about this palette, and I will mention this to Steve, that the way the pans move around, we'll see if they stick after I get this thing dirty. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so we got that. Now I got my Green Appetite Genuine Sap Green, which is a Cotman. Then I have my Raw Sienna. I'm going to put over here by my yellows. This also gets air bubbles out so that you don't end up with tunnels underneath those little holes that you get when you pour your colors. Um, I, sh I really shouldn't wanted to put my Payne's Gray over here and now I can move my pans around later and I might do that because I usually like to have my Payne's Gray next to my Indigo because they're so close in color. And then I have Burnt Sienna for my final color. Now I didn't put any Burnt Umber or anything, any darker browns in here, but I can easily make a dark brown by adding some Payne's Gray to a Burnt Sienna and making it into a Burnt Umber very simply. So or even adding a little bit of blue, but the blue will gray it down and I don't want to do that. So, got a lot of paint in this cap, so I just want to use that. Okay, so that mess is done. And you guys watched the whole thing, unless you fast forwarded it, which you probably should have, and maybe I will speed this up. Um, okay, so now I got, 
all my colors in. I got all these little dusties from my caps where the paint breaks off. So now those are all in, and then I can just put a little water in here. I got a glass of water. I'm just going to add a little water to each side. I'll have clean and dirty. One thing that I do like about this, too, is that, um, and a little sip for me. <laughs> um, the way the, the uh, brush sits when you're not using it, this these little divots hold your brush, but one is on the inside, one is on the outside, so it doesn't roll off. See how I can pull it back and forth, and it just spins under my finger. It doesn't it doesn't fall off. The only way it's going to fall is if you do that, you know. And it's the same on both sides. This way is the same, and that's pretty cool. So now I do have to finish my sketching for yesterday and today in my little journal. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use this palette. But one thing that I'm having, I, I have a problem with too with this, um, is this little metal piece that closes the palette up. Whoops. What was in there? Something just fell down in there, I thought. Maybe not. I just thought it did. Um, there's no place to put this when it's not in use. I don't know where you're supposed to put it. I guess I could set it there, but it would definitely fall off. So I'm not sure. And maybe that's one of the minor changes he's planning to come up with. But um, you have to put it in a pocket. You know, or put it away somewhere so you don't lose it. Otherwise, these are not going to stay together. And that could be an issue. So I'm going to put my paints away and then I'll get started with my sketching and we'll be done. Okay, well, for my first impressions anyway, this is a cute little palette. Um, it's pretty sturdy. I mean, as far as knocking it over, um, it doesn't seem to wobble at all. I've got it sitting on an angle and it's doing fine. Um, the palette takes a lot of pressure when you're pushing on it. Um, the brush has a lot of nice spring. It's a nylon brush. It's golden taclon, I would assume. Um, but it's got great spring to it. Nice, stiff spring, so it's easy to work with. Um, I like the point on it. The point is really, really nice. Um, I just did a quick sketch of this teacup that I had received as a gift the other day, and I was drinking tea out of it when I drew that. Um, and I did, never got it painted, so I'm going to finish this. I need to finish yesterday's, and then I can do my my weekly review on my sketches in my journal. But um, as far as this goes, um, I do like it. I need to scrub this a little bit to get the um, to get the shininess, that coating off of it that's on most plastic palettes. I hate that. Um, usually it wears off on its own over time just by rubbing on it, but um, I'll probably speed it along with a magic eraser. The fact that my paints are wet right now makes it a little bit more difficult to use. Um, and the water cups seem to stay very steady. They're, they weren't spilling all over the place or anything like that. So that's nice. Right now, on my first impressions, I have a problem with that being loose. You need to put it in a pocket when you're using it. If you set it down somewhere and lose it, you're not going to be able to keep your palette shut. Um, now, as far as removing the cups, they come off very simple like that. Whoops, except that you're not supposed to drop them. Um, and I'm just going to see if I can fold this shut with this on. Yep, you can. So I can close it up and then remove it like that. Oh, this your brush is really pretty nifty. I like that it folds up really small and that you have two sizes of brush and you can just keep it in your little palette there. This is very steady. There's no wiggle to it when I push on it. There's just no wiggle at all, which is really nice. Um, 
I'm a little concerned about whether or not my pans are going to be flipping up all over the place when I'm using them. We're going to see how that works over time. If worse comes to worse, I can put a little double-sided tape in the bottom just to hold them down or something, but I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, this is an issue. I'm afraid it, it will get lost, so I'll have to, like, immediately do something if I'm out sketching, like put it in my pen case, you know, stick it in here or actually inside so that I don't lose it um, because I wouldn't want to lose this piece. If you lose this piece, your, your portable painter will not stay closed. Um, so those are my only concerns at this point. This is very steady. I was impressed. These take a lot of pushing and weight. They're not it's not a flimsy plastic at all, um, and it withstands the weight that you would need to, to mix paints, no problem. Um, to put it away, you can close it up first like that. You close this flap first, and then the one that says portable painter goes on top. Then you just slide these off in either direction, and then you dump your water, and then just put it back together like this with these little lips both facing in the same direction put this on and you're all set and that's it you're ready to go I mean that is a small kit <laughs> you can go urban sketching for for just this much you know that's all you need right there that's everything so I think that's a pretty good deal I like how I love the size of this palette I think it's very portable, um, but there are a few things, a couple things that concern me, whether or not those pans will stay in there when after they're dry um, and losing this thing. So um, that's the first impression with this. I'm going to try and use it a little more. And, oh, I messed this up. Shoot, I got water all over it and I messed it up. Oh, well, it's just a sketchbook, so... Um, Anyway, that's my first impression. So everybody have a great day. And if you're interested in trying one of these yourself, $23 is not a bad price. Actually, it's a very good price um, for what you get here. Um, I have another palette that I'm going to be showing you next. And that one was lots more expensive, although it came with professional paints in it too. Um, so it was very expensive. But um, I'll be showing you that in my next review and um, if you're interested in this and you want to help him out so that he can get his production up and running um, then then I would say go ahead and get the portable painter for $23 so um, everybody have a great day and I'm going to be doing my journal run through um, next I got a little behind with, with my family party and with Christmas and everything, so I'll get caught up to Saturday, and then my next video, I will go through my first week for you in my vlog. So everybody have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.